uh, to uh, blazing the Yellowstone Trail. Uh, this presentation tonight is uh, uh, sponsored by the Winnebago County Historical and Archaeological Society. I'm on the board of the society and uh, several other people in here are members and, uh, on the board. Uh, the society was founded in 1919 it was founded here at the Oshkosh Public Library, and then it moved to the Oshkosh Public Museum, and now it's in the, uh, our home is at the Morgan House on Church Avenue, that is the uh, 18, uh, something, 80, 1880, 1880, 1880 uh, home of uh, the Morgan family. Um, we uh, try to promote uh, historic uh, initiatives in Winnebago County, and state. Um, tonight we have a speaker uh, who is also a historian. Uh, he's been uh, 40 years in the Winchester Area Historical Society. The Winchester area includes the town of Wolf River, Clayton, Vinland, and town of Winchester. Uh, he's been on that board for 40 years. Oh no. Not, or he's been on it, yeah. with him, been on with, it, yeah. with it for 40 years, not on the board. I try to he's the he's board. also a U.S. Army veteran, um, and he's written nature columns. He's also a member of the Ripon Historical Society, and his name is Pete Christensen. And uh, with that, we're going to let Pete uh, make his presentation. And at the end, we can have questions or whenever you want to make questions, I guess. So, uh, Making that funny noise again? Yep. It's booting up. We have blue flashing lights. There we are. There I am in glorious color. This is the Geringer Fjord in Norway. Okay, am I on? I'm on. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I. Last time I gave a presentation, it was with a microphone, and I was supposed to hold the microphone, <laughs> and I forgot about it. It didn't work. So <laughs> I, I used to be a, um, a scout presentator. Presentate. Never mind. Presenter. Present. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Sticker. Why don't you sit right up here because I'm going to need you. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And. Um, I you know, had a lot more volume then, and I could always turn it up a little bit if the boys weren't listening, so that's kind of the way I go. Yeah, I'm, oops, that's the wrong one. Okay, I'll forget it. If you want to do a talk it's about the Lions Club. It's black and yellow, it counts. Talk about the Lions Club, we can do that. This is the one I want to grab, okay. Slideshow, presenter view. There we are, that looks like it's just like what we're doing there. Son of a gun, if it isn't a map of the Yellowstone Trail, a good road from Plymouth Rock to Puget Sound. How many of you are aware that the first transcontinental railroad ha ha highway passed just over a block from here? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, great. Went right up Main Street, across on Murdoch, and again uh, Jackson. Uh, started here in 1915. Uh, started, um, was active through 1931, Wisconsin uh, took over responsibility for all the roads. Um, a detailed map will follow at the end of the presentation, so if you want to, we can, we can flip back and forth so you can see, see Oshkosh and everything else, and otherwise, um, I've got a book here that'll help you even more. Uh, anybody interested? Well, got less than a century ago anyway, and um, a lot of people don't even know about it. Um, I didn't know about it until, of course, my mother had talked about it, but that's different. A bit of history, first of all, of course. I'm a historian, whatever. Um, man started out walking everywhere. It was tough. Um, but for a hunter-gatherer, there wasn't much of a problem because he didn't have much. He had his weapons, he had his, some, a little bit of food because he, didn't, he could find his food. I believe it was um, Schoolcraft who uh, reported uh, on, a winter spent with the Indian the tribe, and he said he seemed to move constantly. They wanted to move all the time, and he always had a heavy burden to carry. So, um, there we go. 
Okay, so about 10,000 years ago, we turned to agriculture. And with agriculture, you're producing excess to your needs. So you need to move it someplace, whether it's to somebody else, a neighbor who's doing something else or whatever. You had to move heavier things. And so we learned that animals could carry more food, more than he could. Animals uh, had a limited carrying capacity too, and one had to include food for them if they were going any distance. Sometime later, they learned they could ride horses. It was a big day. Uh, ships were better for transporting large quantities uh, over long distances. They had to go awful slowly, though. Um, these ones like this one here, which is a, a fairly fast one, would go about three miles an hour. Um, they were great for carrying loads, and they've been doing that since before Roman times. Just last month in Madison, you probably all heard about it, that they discovered the remains of a dugout canoe from about 3,000 years ago. Uh, they're a little more than people carriers, uh, only as wide as the biggest tree you can find, and a lot of work to build. Okay, canoes reached their highest potential with the North American fur trade. The fur trade cano cargo canoes were built by Indians and could hold as much as seven tons. Uh, this one here I counted, and I think there's 17 people in it, plus the cargo in the center. Um, uh, so you have to have um, a lot of paddlers, and those paddlers are little short paddles. I don't know why they could use the short paddles, but that's what they did. Um, again, the problem carrying food and stop, or stopping to hunt for something to eat, uh, cut into the payload. Birch bark canoe, um, properly cared for, which means under a roof in the winter time, um, it lasts about two years. And in one season, they could go as much as 5,000 miles, believe it or not. Uh, to get from one place to another with a canoe, uh, the first maps that we have of the area, um, uh, the problem with water is, uh, first of all, it freezes, and then um, uh, it goes where it wants to go, not where you want to go. Uh, I took a trip on the Delta Queen, oh God, probably 15 years ago, from Chattanooga, Tennessee to Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, 280 miles as the crow, crow flies, 365 by car, <coughs> and over 1,400 uh, by the waterways that we went on. Early maps included a lot of navigation information. You can see here that they're counting the lakes from one river to another so they can get to where they want to go. This was the route of the um, Wisconsin River over to the Mississippi River by way of the Flambeau, the Namikagan, and also the St. Croix. Uh, canals were the next improvement. Um, they went where you wanted to go, but they were again slow. Um, problem, federal government uh, insists, invested in a few canals early on, but soon learned that it was a losing proposition. Everybody had a plan to connect their town with the markets and had hired lobbyists to help promote their ideas. In the end, most of the canals lost money. Construction and maintenance were real killers. Um, as you can see, it's got you know, sculptured stone on the sides of it. Um, if it leaks, you gotta fix the leak. Um, and there were people that didn't like the canals and so they would sabotage them. Um, Okay. Canal needs a dam and a lock everywhere that the altitude changes. This is a canal from Norway. Um, I couldn't find my pictures when I took it when I was over there. Uh, the one that I had the picture in um, Telmark has 15 locks, one after the other, raising each about 10 feet. Uh, the one on the, um, the Tennessee River um, when we were on the Delta Queen was 93 feet, so you could really move a lot up and down. It took about a half an hour for all of the water to empty it out so the boat could come down to the next level or up. It had to be pumped in. Um, uh, uh, mountains were a huge problem. In the U.S. they devised a system for pulling canal boats up and over the mountains um, with greased slideways and chains. The boat going down helped pull the one up and so uh, horses could provide a, a next extra stuff, power to provide for the compensate for the friction, but still it was a losing condition or situation. Uh, the Fed considered an amendment to the direct the effect that roads were a state's responsibility. They didn't want any part of it. States didn't have any money either, 
So it became somebody else's problem. And everybody wanted somebody else to do something else to pay for the roads that they wanted and needed. Finally, steam power. Steam power has <coughs> been around a long time. Um, but Robert Fulton, and he didn't invent the steam engine or make the first steamboat, but he was the first commercially successful one. Finally, people could go faster than Julius Caesar could go 2,000 years ago. Steam provided the power to go faster then. The railroad, and by the way, that is a genuine flying saucer up in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you go through a lot of the old pictures, you'll find a lot of people would add either the Wright Brothers plane or something to that old picture to make it look like, or a, a streetcar track. That was another one that got put on a lot of times. Next came the railroad. Many times they were built right next to the canals because that was the fastest route, the flattest route, and they could cut the competition. Finally, freight and people could move, be moved economically at a faster speed. The U.S. government gave railroads large swaths of land on either side of the track where the track would go to sell to farmers so they could finance the railroads there. Abraham Lincoln, believe it or not, was a railroad engineer a railroad lawyer before he went into politics. He wanted his presidency to be about all about getting a railroad to the Pacific Ocean. Civil War got in the way. For the first time, man could move faster than 25 miles an hour, the speed of a galloping horse. An ancient philosopher once reasoned that if man went faster than that 25 miles an hour, uh, he would explode. <laughs> After all, the only time they'd ever seen anybody go faster than that was when they fell off a cliff and they always exploded at the end of their trip. <laughs> um, I'm sure you've all heard of the Oshkosh and Wausau Railroad. Hello, hello. Yeah, good. Um, it went, um, an Illinois company wanted to, the state to grant them money or land to build it. Right through the Rat River marsh and about a mile from where I grew up. The railroad was important, so important to the farmers there because they were spending three days at a time as they were taking stuff into uh, Nina for, to sell, um, that they started they building the grades for the railroad themselves. And you can actually see one, I'll show you a map. Uh, also, there was a bridge started over the Red River. Um, this is a um, Winchester 1862 map. Um, M would go right along here and this was the grade that was there. Um, this is about six feet high and it would get just right where the leaves are gone and the first snowfall, you can see this thing here that's about, that's actually about six feet tall, going up a grade to make it easier for the railroad. They never started, or started the railroad. Um, the timbers for the, um, uh, on, on the Rat River there, yeah, right there, you know, way up there, yeah. We're, we're still there, and I can see them 100 years later as we were canoeing up there. Um, my sister liked them so much that she took one out and was gonna have it for, uh, you know, a nice timber for the uh, living room to show it off, and um, within a year after it got out of the water, it just disintegrated totally. Where are we? American wheelmen, bicyclists. Bicycles are another, bicycle riders are another huge factor. The bicycle had been perfected in the 1880s and riders organized as American wheelmen. I remember my grandmother always talking about, you, did you come down with the wheel? It wasn't even a bicycle, it was the wheel. That was what she called it. Bike riders numbered in the hundreds of thousands and they had been pushing state and federal government for roads for years. Yet in 1912, there were few good roads, no all-weather roads, and no useful long-distance roads, and no government-marked routes. The house in the background, by the way, was built around 1900 for a total of $600. How about that, Terry? <laughs> That's documented. Okay, so early riding got to be a challenge. Um, this is a trick we used to do with our tractor. We, poke a, um, a log through the, um, uh, through the spokes and they give you a lot more traction if you didn't tip the tractor over. And I've got a picture of a tractor tipped over <laughs> doing just that. So 
lot of fun. The Yellowstone Trail was the first transcontinental automobile highway in the United States. It went through northern the tier states from Washington to Massachusetts. Yet two people even know about it anyway today um, or are aware of the uh, social, political, and economic effects it had on the nation and the communities that they served. The route was conceived by a J.W. Palmerly, and I can't even pronounce his last name, uh, a town of Iskwich, Yeah, South Dakota, 1912. The automobile was just increased, becoming popular, but interstate railroads were a mess. Um, so um, railroads had become um, the dominant, almost the sole means of any kind of travel that were going any distance. But railroads were losing their allure. Nobody cared for them anymore because they were monopolistic. They were going to make the rate setting as much as they could get out of whoever was moving something. Um, and also, um, the routes were inconvenient. Um, schedules, depots, locations. Um, Parmalee had to move his, uh, had to take his stuff to market, had to go 25 miles in a wagon. And that's, that's a day's, a good day, perhaps two. Um, so, he and his uh, business partners uh, wanted a good road just from Isku, Isku never mind to Albertine, South Dakota, just to get crops to the railroad depot, 25 miles away. Incidentally, he'd also bought a new Studebaker, so that would explain his other motivation. <laughs> <laughs> this can-do pioneer spirit of the time immediately emerged, and in a few weeks' time, the interest had expanded to include a good road to Mobich, South Dakota, then to Hellinger, Heckinger, Heninger, North Dakota, then finally on the Yellowstone National Park, very soon. Soon it was understood that it was going to be, under their leadership, it was going to be a good road from Plymouth Rock to Puget Sound, all the way. The Yellowstone Trail Association was formed in 1912, about the same time as Lincoln Highway got going, and was active until 1930. The creation of the Yellowstone Trail was a grassroots effort, not a government effort, and not the effort of a bunch of wealthy business leaders uh, as the Lincoln Highway was. I've got a picture of that someplace here too. Um, they were formed the same year and they're still in the <coughs> over which one came first. Ah, you may recognize this picture. There's a church in Winchester built in 1902. Um, the road uh, defies description. It's dry because there's a um, quite a slope there. Um, and um, later on, this trail was improved. Um, I'll bet you that was dusty, too. It was paved over in 1928 and um, was part of the trail until 30 when the state took over. Here it is in um, uh, Medina, just over the border in Ottagamie County. This is a postcard that's postmarked 1912, so we know that this was an actual happening there. The street is wide, mostly dirt. The car, the 1908 Maxwell, for your car buffs there. And all of the buildings have changed or disappeared over the years, except one, and that's way down the street, almost on top of the, um, uh, of the Maxwell there. Uh, within three years, the road had, I'm sorry, the Yellowstone Trail had started in 1912, and almost 700 miles away in 1912. Within three years, the road had become part of the trail between Winnebago and Ottagamie County, and it connected with the West. Okay. Medina today, as you can see, things have changed a whole lot. Um, just point of interest. So here's the trail from Puget Sound uh, all the way to the East Coast. Soon it was understood that their leadership and participation would be a, they would be a good road all the way across the country. By 1950, yeah, 1950, the Yellowstone Trail was extended east from Minneapolis, Minnesota, through Winnebago County, and then south through Wisconsin to Chicago. The association main, remained active until 1930, after the government established routes numbers 
and the depression eliminated the federal financial support from the business community. Am I talking loud enough for everybody? Is this working? Okay, I can't hear anything, so. Okay, the old national road trails followed the national road and the Santa Fe Trail across the country. It was also formed in 1912, and so was the Lincoln Highway. Um, we're all, all of them were just pieced together from existing roads and improved. The old National Road was one of the first ones, the National Road, the one that the federal government actually contributed to uh, was for Conestoga Wagon. We picture the, um, um, these big wagon trains with the wagon, uh, the Conestoga. wagons, of Conestoga wagons. They never used them out west here. That was strictly a, um, a six or an eight horse hitch uh, between um, Philadelphia and maybe out to Ohio. Um, so anyhow, this, uh, the national, old National Road connected um, out to Illinois linking state capitals. Lobbying and money convinced the whole federal government to make the road and make it work. Uh, the states had the same problems, they were broke. Everybody wanted a road, but preferred to have somebody else pay for it. The National Park Road Park had an all-weather surface. Uh, it had been invented by a Scotsman named McAdam. Is that a familiar name? Yeah. We would probably call it improved gravel today. So this is the Lincoln Highway, uh, pretty much the same. Did go through Chicago. And um, the Yellowstone Trail, in order to add interest and expand people um, thinking about it, included not only going to Yellowstone National Park, but included the Loop Trail around um, not only Yellowstone, but to Glacier, to Mount Rainier, to Crater Lake, Lawson, Yosemite, Zion, and then back to Yellowstone. Grand Teton wasn't included until 1929, just about the demise of the trail. So those days they put out pamphlets to give you an idea of what was going on. Guidebooks told where to go and what to visit. Uh, we've got a copy of one from uh, this one here, that's an original. Um, included the condition of the road, where to get gas, important, and repairs. The Yellowstone Trail Association was active until 1930. It was established as a headquarters in Minneapolis, although meetings were held all across the country with local representatives. Membership was offered to delegates from towns all over the route. These people raised money through local system of assessments and often headed local volunteer groups to mark the route and either uh, fix it or uh, repair it. Um, and the sites were marked uh, first with yellow stones, and you've probably seen it. You went on up 76 or old 45. Uh, there's about three of them in the different places there. Uh, there's also some root markers, the old circle with the arrow in the center, it's Yellowstone Trail. Um, let's see. Okay, the Yellowstone Trail Association relied on local farmers and merchants and their townships and the counties for labor and materials to improve the roads. Local committees were formed, business communities and badgered business and local state governments to create roads that were passable in all weather and constructed with other, connected with other roads. That was really important too. You know, you had a road, but if it didn't connect with anything, it wasn't much good. Local committees sponsored trail days when all the trail towns along the road would help build and repair the road. Uh, the association sponsored races and travel bureaus, supplied travelers with maps, weather conditions, and lists of facilities in trail towns. And we've got a couple of those here. Uh, I mentioned, I say the devil's in the details. Looks good on paper on this, what, what is this macadam? As defined by Wikipedia, it's eight inches, uh, no larger than three inch stone gravel uh, over an existing, whatever existing soil was there with a two inch layer of three quarter inch gravel over the top of it. McAdams preferred way to make it was by hand. Um, and it was covered with a thin layer of what was called binder. Binder was either the leftover little pieces of gravel 
uh, but but bitumen, or, or, or tar, or even water, whatever it took to settle the road in, you kind of make it waterproof. The surface should be three inches higher at the center so the water would drain off rather than drain down. And um, this, by the way, is um, from a 1919 19 folder about the trail, and it talks about the trail from Road Milwaukee to Oshkosh is well developed, largely macadamized. From Oshkosh, the trail goes north to Nina, Menasha, and Appleton, following a mostly or closely along the Lake Winnebago. Can you read this? Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. oh, okay, you probably read it by now. I'm kind of boring, <laughs> so that's okay. I'm not. By now, I should probably tell a joke. Did you hear about the um, um, snoke snake that walked into a bar? The bartender says, "How did you do that?" This is funny because somebody will get it, somebody else will get it, somebody else. Snakes don't have legs. <laughs> All right, we'll go on. <laughs> this crowd is tough. <laughs> on the Yellowstone Trail, um, here we go. That's not the trail in the foreground there. My mother always called this the little cemetery to the east of Fremont, the Yellowstone Cemetery. She said that people along the trail died and they had to find if we couldn't carry them to the next town because there wasn't enough ice. Uh, people at the town hall said that um, it's, it's always been called the Pioneer Cemetery. My mom was old and they were young, so who knows what the real story was. The Yellowstone School is now a private residence in Reedfield. It's built along the early trail. Uh, one of the things that local communities and committees also encouraged the creation of campgrounds and tourist cabins so that people could um, spend a little longer in their town, uh, maybe spend a little bit more money. Um, a trail, the tr trail running the length of the county caused people to feel connected with each other, which they didn't feel before. They were anxious to maintain their part of the trail as a way of showing off. Our society, uh, we have a, the Winchester Area Historical Society, have a manuscript diary of a John Monson who traveled much of the weather Yellow, Western Yellowstone Trail in a 1929 Dodge Brothers car. He had converted it to a camper with a bed in the back. He carried four spare tires and wished he could have brought a whole lot more. <laughs> the trail existed as an entity until the depression and businesses could no longer afford to support it. Nina, Menasha, and Appleton, I'll get to this a little later, opted out earlier. Um, they felt that their, the trail should go through their main streets instead of Oshkosh's. Or, okay, so lots of reports of people going coast to coast on the trail. We've got one here and I think part of it's one there. And we've also got, this by the way is a, a map, page by page of um, little area from, you know, there's a little area giving all of the details where it goes off on a little side road and what used to be a road and all of that other stuff is all in there. So, um, and I think if you take a folder, there's an advertisement for it. Otherwise, we've got all of these books in the Winchester Library. Um, let's see, people um, built up to take care of people on the road. At one time in Winchester, there were eight filling stations along the trail, all of them along the trail. Five were in the little village of Winchester, less than a tenth of a mile from all of five of them. Believe it or not. Um, of the eight in the town, two were supported by cheese factories, three by general stores, well, one each by an auto dealership, a bar, and a blacksmith shop. You, you had, could put, you know, if you were going to be there, you put a gas pump up. Lady stopped by our library, oh God, I would say probably six months ago now. She had done Route 66 in a snappy red Ford Mustang convertible. Now she wanted information on the trail. And we, she took a look at that book and says, I'm gonna get it, and she did. She also promised to come back and give us a report after she got back. I haven't seen her yet, but I imagine it takes a while. So, the Yellowstone Trail Association is what's active today and it promotes the Yellowstone Historic National Automobile Route. Alice and John Ridge, who wrote that one and that one and collaborated on that one, um, were retired professors at Stevens Point and they were looking for a project. Uh, they spearheaded the efforts to promote it. 
Um, it has a website that publishes a newspaper, newsletter, has books and maps, and based on their research. It was just a few years ago that they uncovered the story of why there were three routes through Winnebago County. Very few places that have, you know, a route here, a route here, and a route here. Um, it's because Nina, Nanasha, and Appleton stopped paying their assessments, and so they moved the road. <laughs> Well, we won't say anything about Oshkosh, by the way. A um, Winchester businessman, Adolph Erickson, who ran a hardware store, wrote in his diary, he was a community um, activist, that he'd just returned from a meeting where we finally got the road to come through Winchester. Now we want a railroad. Can you imagine a, a railroad going up that hill? No, yeah. bad chance of that happening, that's for sure. So here we are, we're on the corner of uh, Julius Road, and um, I think that's, uh, it used to be Highway 10, now it's 95. John Julius um, lived on that road, <laughs> and um, he first told me about the trail. He was a trail boss in Winnebago and Outagamie counties, and had helped mark the trail. Incidentally, that stone there that you're looking at there is actually from the original trail. It was put in somebody's yard, they brought it over, he said, when you're doing this, we will um, uh, we'll put that up there and make a show out of it. Um, so, um, I, by the way, that something? sign there too is also the um, uh, the official marker of the trail. I see a hand up yes. back there. Um, my brother is John Julius, but if you went up to the right, just up the road where yep. that evergreen tree is or pine tree, I live there. Oh. And our house was an overnight stop on the Yellowstone Trail. Okay. We had two front doors, so you were went to the right hand porch, right. you'd go into the parlor and the other door went into a gathering room and then there were two little rooms that they would rent out to okay. drivers. Yeah. So I wonder if that was one of them. I, I used to work for Kenny. Yeah, that's my dad. Yeah. Way back when I was fifteen years old, that was three or four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> In nineteen eighteen. Wisconsin was the first state, actually the first government in the world, to establish long distance highway routes, identify them with numbers, and use that numbers to mark state system of roads. They recorded ported those routes numbers on the first road maps. By 1925, most states and many countries around the world had implemented this idea. The type of marking went, was so well received that on November 11, 1928, six, the American Association of State Highway Officials, in conjunction with the, I have to read this all out, the Bureau of Public Roads of the United States Department of Agriculture implemented the plan to identify interstate routes and use the same system that Wisconsin had invented. Um, are we proud? You bet we are. Uh, even numbered roads go east and west, odd numbered roads go north and south. That was the idea, and um, if you don't follow uh, 96, uh, 94 is Interstate 94, it fits up pretty good, but for 100 miles there, it goes the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> These U.S. routes travel along state highways, then and now, and, uh, and not on a federal uh, highway system. Now, many years later, the state highways, which constitute, now constitute the interstate highway system, were identified with a similar uh, system. So, here we are. This is a trail going through Winnebago County. Let's find my little marker here. Um, original trail, this is Oshkosh. Came right up there, up Main Street, across to Murdoch, and up Jackson Street, okay? Uh, I, 1919 to 1922, Nina <coughs> and Asha convinced the trail people that they needed to go through there. So they instituted up through Harrison Street, up along the, um, up along the lake, up and through Nina and Manasha and Appleton, and then out the um, 76 or Old Town or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that was when they stopped paying. They thought they had it made, so they stopped paying it. And um, so then it bounced back here for a couple of years, and eventually as this road, the Highway 45 going north through Winchester, um, 
got um, uh, uh, developed, and that's when they put it, that was the one that Adolph was talking about. For a while, even they went up W, I guess, mm -hmm. and Bison Road, yeah, okay. But always it went in, always it started out in Oshkosh at the bridge and ended up at the bridge in um, uh, Fremont. Okay. Um, I have to tell you a story about the bridge in Fremont. My father in the 30s with um, tires that weren't very good, he and his brothers went up to uh, Fremont to, for the opening of the bridge. And, you well, know, beer was involved. But <laughs> they um, <coughs> had a good afternoon and they were coming home and boom, one of the tires busted. And they congratulated my Uncle Howard who was driving on how he was able to hold the car in position <coughs> because it was a gravel road and it was, and, and he really did a perfect job. And then they get out to check the tires and turn out it was a spare. And he was <laughs> no trouble at all. <laughs> okay. So, the last, and ended up for the last uh, six years, it went through Winchester and Butamore. And I enlarged the, um, the Oshkosh one so you can take a look at it. And if you're interested, I can switch these back and forth. You can come up and take a closer look if you want to. Um, the book, this is from an older <coughs> book, and um, that book has it with kind of greenery and stuff in there, so it's not quite as clear, but um, all the information is there. So, here we are, the Yellowstone Trail. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the official marking. <coughs> and you're going left. Uh, big things are beginning to happen in Wisconsin. It's, this is catching on. Several Wisconsin, uh, have had several Wisconsin Trail Days, which Yellowstone Trail Days have um, been in central Wisconsin and is spreading across the strait. Information online, of course. Oh, I can. Um, trail markers have gone up from in Wapaka and Fond du Lac. Uh, they'll be going up in Amherst and Hector, Minnesota. So the whole town will be going right through the town with the trail markers. Uh, there's a trail headquarters in uh, South Dakota, another website. Um, Village of Fond du Lac, um, Mr. Williams mentioned this. Um, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin has created a village park on the route of the Yellowstone Trail. The park was recently dedicated as Yellowstone Trail Park. It's near a building which was once called the Yellowstone Garage. Radical articles, I've got one on the Yellowstone Trail on the American Road. Also, they have a newsletter. Uh, and you're welcome to come on up here and enjoy. Any questions? Thoughts? So, so the name Yellowstone Trail was because they put yellow stones along the way? Uh, yeah. They wanted to hook it up to the Yellowstone National Park because that was just, um, it was the first national park and it was um, um, everybody kind of in everybody's mind, I guess you'd say. And so by attaching the name of Yellowstone to the road, uh, that created more interest in the road. Uh, there's also a Yellowstone Highway, and that goes down to Denver, and um, uh, that's a whole other story that's actually in this uh, edition of the Arrow, which is the um, um, newsletter for the Yellowstone Highway. I think you can turn on the lights, or do you want to look at the maps again? Okay. Let me turn back to that. Is there a question here? Yes. I have a question. Sure. Um, I always knew that the road went from Maine up to Murdoch. Yeah. A friend gave me a photo that he got from a book from 1919 oh, yeah. that shows it on Jackson Street. Right, Jackson. Uh, it went up Murdoch, or went across on Maine to Murdoch, and then up the rest of Jackson Street following. Right, but but yeah. this is at the corner of New York and Jackson. Okay, later on, I think it did. Let's go back to that. I think that's a heck of a good question. There we are. And... Maybe one of the other yeah, maybe, Let's see, this is Algoma and High Street. And uh, that would be real close, but let's see, that's... Mm -hmm. 
one of the other maps show it, and after that's map C. Yeah. Now let's go back one more. Actually, this is just a, a tape off of that map. Yes. It did go, did go up. And, I'd like a copy of that. Hmm. Oh, my microphone is falling off. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> so did uh, yeah. So would you say that the the trail, like you're pretty much up on the Winchester area. Yeah. So you're talking that went up the old highway 110 to the corner. Yep. And then it took a left into Zittau. Yep. And up to into Fremont. Into Fremont, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, th and my next question is, is in Oshkosh, south of Oshkosh, in Oshkosh, is all the signage put up to see? So if I were to travel through Oshkosh, am I going to be able to see these Yellowstone Trail signs? No. Not, they have, Oshkosh has not put them up yet. And Mondo why is that? Um, other and towns are, they're working on it. Okay. Yeah. Um, the book has in detail, detail of exactly where, and you got a batch of different choices. Um, which one of this is Old Oneida? This is Appleton there. Oh, yeah. So, but yeah, I would, if you're going to get that serious about it, I would recommend you grab the book. Just for well, I, don't, I guess the reason I say that, I'm, I've seen them more in small towns like Amherst, I've sure. seen them, I've seen them, but I get into Point, I get into Oshkosh, I get into so many, and I'm not seeing the signage in the bigger city. Right, well, yeah. Yeah, um. Didn't leave anything because we were too busy being bothered from Western. <laughs> I didn't hear that. It was low on their priorities. Yeah, it yeah. probably is, yeah. I mean, well, I'm, I'm sure that Wil Winchester will not be putting any up unless the historical society does. But yeah. Our his, the Winnebago County Historical Society is looking for new ideas for markers um, to contribute towards. I so mean, that's interesting. I'd be glad to contribute my map here. I will but, be uh, happy to bring that up at our next meeting. Yeah, you probably have it on the tape there anyway, so good. Okay. Um, Fun, fun talking with you. Oh, close, sorry. Close. <laughs>